Welcome to the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast. I'm Dr. Rovello, and I am here with my amazing co-host, Dr. Jay Calvert. How are you? I'm good. Yeah? I am very good. I'm very excited to talk about uh, lymphatic massage. I'm very excited to talk about lymphatic massage. I know you're a fan. <laughs> I'm into it. I really, <laughs> really am. And we should, it's good for our patients. It's really good. So background, lymphatic massage is something that you can do without having had surgery, although I don't really know why you would, but typically it's done. It's healthy. It's, it's they think there's health benefits to moving your lymph system around. I suppose. If you do it on a regular basis. Yes, of course. Like once or twice here and there, I don't know how much good it's going to do. But the idea is that typically after surgery, although I guess we could do it before, um, you are getting a massage by a therapist or a specialized person who's been trained in not just typical massage techniques but specifically lymphatic massage massaging areas of your body in a way that's designed to move fluid out of the tissues and decrease swelling and decrease fluid accumulation right and that's what happens with a lot of our operations you get swelling you get yeah fluid accumulation we put fluid in in liposuction yes the tumescent technique is literally pumping fluid into the the fat that's going to be removed so we want to get this to move along to move along and by definition of what we've done creating trauma in your body we've damaged a lot of those lymphatic channels those drainage channels we've created trauma and swelling in the area so the body on its own is going to struggle to eliminate that fluid and that swelling. And that's where the lymphatic massage comes in handy. So I have patients that say, well, do I need to? I mean, wouldn't my body just, you know, flush it out anyways? Eventually, yes, it, it, it will. You know, the swelling, no one's swelling lasts forever. But this definitely moves it along faster. And I think that there are benefits to getting it done and getting the swelling down faster in the healing period. Yeah, for sure. And I am a fan of... Uh, kind of explaining to my patients why lymphatic massage is a good idea. I, I like it in facelifts. I like it in abdominoplasties, brachioplasties, arm lipo. Any time that we're creating some swelling that we'd like to move it along, it's really effective. It's and it very makes, effective. It makes things look better. It makes things look so much better. That's why I like it and I harp on it with my patients. Because, yes, you get the immediate benefit of having your swelling come down faster. Um, in my patients that I've done a lot of body work on, um, liposuction, tummy tucks, BBLs, that lymphatic massage just makes the result look so much smoother because as the body heals, it's going to form scar tissue. There's going to be some lumpy areas of fat maybe in one area versus the other. And if you can start to smooth out that scar tissue or smooth out those contours as they're healing before they get stuck where they are, you're going to have such a better result. And my patients that do lymphatic massages pretty religiously after they're contouring procedures just have such better results so I find that well when let me ask you this when do you like to start lymphatic massage after say abdominoplasty I say as soon as they can tolerate it because yeah. it is going to be painful in the beginning because you're sore and you're post-op um, I have I have have some uh, facilities which say they want the drains to be out before they start doing massage I don't have a problem with them having drains and if anything i think it helps like if you're yeah. massaging things and pushing fluid out like great now you have a drain that it can go into so having a drain in is not prohibitive for starting a massage for me what about with um liposuction is it as soon as they can tolerate mm -hmm. it yeah that's yep. how i feel about it too because it's like you know it's going to be painful so i i'll usually say okay could you imagine if i'm going to like grab your leg and then milk the milk the fluid out of your leg and they go ah i'm like okay so you're not so ready you're not yet. ready so let's give it a little, yeah. little bit of time because you can see their face like ah, that would hurt so much then that's no good yeah i mean if you can get it started within the first you know one to two weeks i think that's a good that's start optimal. and then ideally i would say ideally if you could do it at least twice a week that'd be great once a week for sure yeah it it makes a difference it moves the healing along gets the fluid out it gets you better results with your tummy tucks your liposuction brachioplasties 
face lifts. I, I find uh, that if you can get good lymphatic massage on a face, it really does make a difference. But not every, not all masseuses, masseurs are created equal when it comes to lymphatic massage. Well, for the face, you almost have to go to an aesthetic uh, center, which does facials, because a lot of times the estheticians themselves are trained in how to do massages of the face, or even at home, if you could use like one of those like gua rollers, that helps as well. So I wouldn't you go to like, you know, the body place where you get your regular massages no. and have, ask them to do your face. That's going to be someone very specific who's either an esthetician or who's very specifically trained in that. Yeah, both of my estheticians <laughs> Are, let both Lauren and Roddy do lymphatic massage. Right, they're right. They're really good. And they're because they're, they're estheticians, so they're used to, to massaging the face. Um, but there's all different different ways and techniques of doing this. There is the traditional masseuse that puts you on a table and massages yep. and works things out. But there also are machines that do this for you now. I have some patients that have gone to places that they have these machine devices. There's also some of these places have ultrasonic cavitation that they do and different yep. applications of heat that they use to get the fluid moving and stimulate things along. So if you're going to a place that really is geared towards treating specifically, usually post-op patients, Patients, but any kind of lymphatic massage therapy, they're going to usually have these alternate modalities as well that you can use to enhance your outcomes. Yeah, I mean, I think ultrasonic uh, treatments are, are good. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different devices that are used for that. I think they, they help a ton. I think that it's really, you know, you have to, you have, to have a good practitioner who can assess the situation right. and do a good job and do for a good you. job and we have a list you know that we keep here in the office that we send to patients of people that we recommend in the area yeah. some have standalone facilities some will go to your house i um, mean time that i get news from a patient that they really liked somebody or liked a place i put them on the list so patient yeah. feedback is very helpful for that um, but what i found very helpful here with a lot of my body contouring patients is these centers these lymphatic massage places these women really know their stuff they've been doing this for a long time do. and so not only do they know how to do the massages and use the different adjuvant techniques they know everything about the fajas and the garments and they can provide the patients with boards that they put under their garments to help with the swelling and so they provide that extra accessory help in the recovery period yeah. that I can't always offer here in the office, but that I find super helpful. So a lot of times I'll be like, well, what did your massage therapist say? And she's like, oh, well, she thinks that if I just use this board and, and go down and excise my compression garment, it'll be okay. I'm like, great. And she probably knows because she sees this every day. Yeah. And those, uh, those garments and those devices, again, it's like the operation needs to be done well and done right, which is what our patients can count on with us yeah. but then that that extra icing on the cake to really max out the result you want that you want that you really do and so put it in the budget with the surgery i would say on average here in la my patients probably spend anywhere between 150 to 250 per session so imagine that once or twice a week you know for six weeks i say do it for six weeks if you can a lot of my patients like to do it for longer because they like it because they continue to see results but if you could at least commit to doing it for six weeks then that's a win yeah, and you got to commit to it. Uh, you know, doing one session isn't going to do anything. It's like one session of hyperbaric. Yeah, uh, no, you really need the full six weeks. Yeah, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is is another thing where it's like you you got to do five dives. That's kind of the deal. If you don't do five treatments, you know, one one will help some, but boy, does five make a difference. Yeah, I'm kind of on the three. You like, like three? I like three. I think three is good. Right. Well, there you go. Five that, that. is better, but three is good. <laughs> five. More is better with HBO. In general, more is always better. Yeah, it is. I mean, it just will. You know, I've, I had like one patient that kind of moved into the HBO. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you've done how many treatments? I was like, well, I guess it's good to be rich. It, well, and it, it has so many other benefits, too, just That's for your true. overall health. I had one lady who had some issues with wound healing after her surgery her breast surgery and so insurance covered her hyperbarics and she just went every day so as long as insurance is paying for it i'm going every day she was up to like four or five weeks she was just <laughs> chilling with her hyperbarics and she's like my skin is so glowy i feel great <laughs> yeah these things they do help and same with lymphatic massage so i think if you can uh check in with your surgeon obviously if it's not us you got you want to ask your surgeon about it you know should i get lymphatic massage do you have somebody that you can recommend um 
since we do have so many people that are now tuning in all around the country. That's great. I know we're hearing from people in on the East Coast and in uh, the South and uh, Midwest. I mean, we're really getting a lot of, uh, and so we appreciate you, listeners, for yes, very for much. chiming in and sending us questions and uh, sending us feedback and coming in for consultations. I mean, that's fantastic. Uh, not everybody has to travel for plastic surgery, but if you do, we think you should come here. <laughs> that's, that's just our little plug it's our very, for ourselves. Very humble <laughs> opinion exactly. of our, ourselves. We think that <laughs> if you're going anywhere, it should be right here to Beverly Hills, in the Rox, Roxbury Clinic and Surgery Center. Well, I think that's all we have on the uh, lymphatic massage, but uh, any, do you have anything else you want to add on that? No, that actually hit most of it. I can't believe we hadn't talked about it before, because again, big fan. Yeah. All right. Well, why don't you take us out then? This is the Beverly Hills Plastic Surgery Podcast coming to you from the 90210.